Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us today. My name is Nick Cook. I'm the Prevention Program Director here at Preferred Family Healthcare. Um, yeah, I've been getting a lot of requests on what exactly a prevention specialist does or, or how they can help coalitions and communities. Um, so I thought I'd just put together a, a quick little webinar, um, exactly what it is that we do, and maybe answer some of those questions uh, for those individuals out there. And maybe for those of uh, uh, you that are joining us that, that do know us personally, um, maybe give you a little bit more insight into exactly what it is we do as prevention specialists, how we can help your coalitions in your communities. So a couple of things I just want to make sure that you all get from this presentation is, you know, what a prevention specialist does, what it is exactly that we do day in and day out and throughout the year, and then how coalitions and communities can use a prevention specialist as a resource. Um, so hopefully by the end of the webinar, you all, you know, will have a greater insight to those two uh, objectives. So first off, I just want to talk about um, there's 10 uh, prevention resource centers throughout the state. Preferred Family Health Care is a prevention resource center as well, one of those 10. Um, and each one has their own uh, unique service area, uh, as you can see from this map. Uh, Preferred Family Health Care is actually the northern 27 counties of Missouri. Um, so if you're in one of these counties here um, that's on, that I've listed on the map, um, I'm, I'm talking more to you today than I am, you know, maybe one of the other prevention resource um, service areas um, because I'm going to talk about what our prevention specialists do in our service area, whereas it may vary just a little bit from prevention resource center to prevention resource center. So within our 27 county area, uh, we have that actually split into three different service areas and we have uh, one prevention specialist for each service area. Um, service area one is Corey Esslinger. Um, he has the western part of our, our service area. And then the central nine counties is Edward Mears, which is service area 13. And then the eastern nine counties of our service area is uh, Mary Lou Bell. And I will give their information uh, at the end of the webinar. Um, actually talk a little bit more about them at the end of the webinar. But just so you know, because uh, we may have some other prevention specialists joining us uh, throughout the state, and you know some of the things that we do may be just a little bit different um, than other prevention specialists from other prevention resource centers. So this is a question I get all the time where I get, what is it that you do? Um, and this is a, it's a great question, um, but it has somewhat of a complex answer. Because in our jobs as a prevention specialist, we are, we're a jack of all trades. And we're constantly doing all kinds of stuff in the office and, and trying to juggle different things, um, you know, from answering phones to emails to, uh, you know, building presentations to grant writing to, uh, uh, there's just a whole list of things that we're constantly doing. So we, we wear, wear many hats uh, here in the office, uh, but it's a good thing because uh, that allows us to be a great resource uh, for the communities that we serve. So I came up with a broad definition of what a prevention specialist is. And what I came up with is a person who effectively works with communities and community groups providing training and technical assistance and mentoring them on the best programs, practices, and policies to implement that will prevent or reduce substance use within communities. Now, a lot of things can be related to substance use prevention. And I think that's one of the misconception that a lot of people have, that we, you know, we deal only with substance use prevention. What it is, is, is we deal with um, things that are related to substance use prevention. And a lot of things can be related to substance use, um, rather, you know, different types of risk factors, uh, protective factors, you know, for example, like bullying, uh, we can relate bullying back to substance use. Um, different types of mental health issues can be related back to substance use. So we're not just in, in substance use prevention only, you know, there's a lot of things on the outside. Uh, 
gray area that can be related back to substance use prevention. And so we, we deal with all that. Um, and then it's not just coalitions. Uh, a lot of times people think that, that we only deal with coalitions when in fact it's communities and community groups that we deal with. I mean, we do do a lot of work with coalitions, but it's also the communities and community groups. Um, maybe it's, it's a group that's trying to become a coalition or wants to become a coalition. Uh, could be groups, you know, we work with schools, we work with faith-based groups, youth groups, we work with mental health task force and groups. Uh, we work with higher education groups like college and universities, city councils, you know, and the list just goes on. Uh, we're a resource for, for all the communities, community groups, coalitions within that 27 county service area. Now we do do a lot of work with coalition, you know, about 60% of our time uh, is working with coalitions, whether we're mentoring them, providing trainings, providing resources, whatever the case may be. But we also spend about 20% of the time working with other community groups in, in that aspect too, um, you know, whether it be training or providing some types of resources. Um, we, and then we do specific trainings uh, that, that are a little bit outside the realm of, you know, working with community groups uh, and coalitions, um, but still part of our prevention specialist job. Um, trainings, you know, that we offer are like mental health first aid trainings, youth mental health first aid trainings, science of suicide trainings. Um, we can do science-based drug trainings, substance use prevention training to community groups and schools. Um, there's just a whole lot of different types of trainings that we can do, um, you know, doing a webinar on what a prevention specialist, you know, would fall in that category too. So just specific trainings. We, we spend about 10% of our time uh, in that realm and then 10% on other, and that's just the daily duties that we have to do um, for the organization that we work for um, is where the rest of our time is spent. But most of our time is working uh, with the coalitions and helping them and then other community groups in our service area. So in the definition of what a prevention specialist is, um, I stated that a person who affect, uh, that a prevention specialist is a person who effectively works with communities and community groups, uh, will provide training and technical assistance, and mentoring them on best programs, practices, and policies to implement that will prevent or reduce substance use within the communities. So what we don't do is we don't come in and tell coalitions what they need to work on or how they need to do something. Uh, we offer technical assistance and training resources to the coalitions in an effort to enhance the coalition's ability to prevent substance use. So we work with the coalition on whatever it is that they're doing and how they want to do it. Um, and, and provide them training and technical assistance that's, that will help them uh, achieve their goals and objectives. And we do this by providing training technical assistance, um, whether it be, and I tried to break it down into five different categories here. Um, so training technical assistance and providing information in the strategic prevention framework, um, which I'm gonna talk a little bit more about each one of these. So if you're not familiar with what the strategic prevention framework is, um, I'm gonna talk about that a little bit. But if you are, um, you already know about it, or maybe you've heard strategic prevention framework and, and you're not exactly sure what that is. Um, talk a little bit more about that too. So, and, and these are all broad categories, um, you know, funding, different types of funding, um, and then help. And I'm going to go into each one of these here a little more detail in, in exactly what it is that we, we can do. Um, but before I do, I just want, want you to know, so, you know, we don't spend more time providing information or we don't spend more time, you know, specializing in the strategic prevention framework or sustainability. You know, all of these services are equal. And, and that's what I want you to get from this diagram. And they all fall within the realm of help. And they're all overlapping. Um, you know, so I don't want people thinking, well, you know, they can only help us with the strategic prevention framework or they can only provide information for us. You know, we do all of these equally, um, again, in, in the whole realm of help. So in providing information, um, we can train and we can hold trainings. Um, so we can go in and, and, and train a coalition, provide them information through trainings or to communities or community groups. 
Um, and then we hold training such as this webinar, you know, periodically throughout the year, we hold different types of trainings um, that people don't ask us to, but we're just trying to educate our service area. Um, so we may hold a, a training, you know, uh, on sustainability, a training on funding, different types of fundings that you can apply for, different the different types of fundings that are available within your community. Um, so trainings and training opportunities. And then also we can do trainings on different types of prevention programs and resources. And all of our trainings are usually based on evidence-based programs, practices, and policies. Uh, so just keep that in the back of your mind. You know, there's science behind what we do. It's been proven to work. Um, then we have informational pamphlets and brochures uh, here at our resource center that we can hand out to community coalitions if they're doing an event or if they just want to educate uh, you know, the community or if they want to educate uh, coalition members, uh, you know, whatever their goal is. But our, we have pamphlets on substance use prevention, um, you know, whether that be alcohol, tobacco, marijuana, um, you know, heroin. We also have some uh, informational pamphlets and brochures on mental health problems. Um, and those are all free uh, to, to those individuals and, and groups within our service area. And then we can also do trainings on, uh, you know, community data and statistics, um, you know, how coalitions can use data, where to get data, um, you know, current drug trends. Right now, you know, heroin is a, is a current drug trend that we're seeing uh, all over mainstream media. Marijuana has been in, in, in you know, in the last year, two years, uh, with it being legalized in some parts of the United States. Um, so we can do, come in and do trainings, uh, provide information on these current drug trends, and then advocacy, um, you know, the difference between advocacy and lobbying. Um, there's some confusion there sometimes. So we can come in and do presentations or trainings and work with coalitions, community groups about advocacy. And then starting and, and or forming a coalition. You know, we've had people come to us and, you know, they know what we do. and and, and that's one of the things uh, we can provide trainings on and, and mentor uh, groups on is, you know, how to start a coalition, the proper way to do it, the science behind it, um, putting a system in place that will allow them to be uh, successful. And the system that we use is the SAMHSA Strategic Prevention Framework. And this is a, this is a great process uh, to, to work with. Uh, it's a framework that is built on evidence-based theory and practices uh, and the knowledge that effective prevention programs must engage individuals, families, and entire communities. Uh, it sets into place a process that empowers communities to identify and implement the most effective strategies to achieve community-level change. Um, and it has five different elements here, uh, assessment, capacity, planning, implementation, and evaluation. And we spend a good deal amount of time trying to make sure that our coalitions and community groups are aware of each one of these elements and that they're aware of their strategic prevention framework uh, because it's a process that if they implement uh, yields results and it yields great results. Um, me with working with the drug-free community coalitions who have received drug-free community grants from SAMHSA, uh, I, I've been fortunate enough to see the strategic prevention framework um, put to use um, and, and the great results that, that come from it. So we're constantly trying to train our coalitions um, in the strategic prevention framework and the different things that they can use, uh, the different elements uh, that will help them meet their goals, objectives, and outcomes. And the first one is assessment. You know, we can provide training on assessment, and this could be provide training or information on how to gather data within your community. Um, you know, the different places you can gather that data, on compiling the data. Once you have all this data, you know, how to organize it and put it together so we can report on it. Uh, reporting the data, you know, to the coalition, to communities, to stakeholders, um, you know, to apply for grants, you know, wherever you want to use that data and how you want to use it, or maybe you don't know how to use it, you know, we can come in and, and train you on different ways how to use this data. And, and putting it all together and completing like a needs assessment. You know, this is the problem in our community. This is what the data is showing us. Well, a lot of times, you know, I've worked with coalitions in the past where they're tackling problems they probably shouldn't be tackling according to the data. The data says, you know, that this is a problem, but they're tackling something else. And, 
and that could be wasted resources tackling a problem that's not a problem. Um, so, you know, using that data um, to define what your problem is and to make a difference in your community. You know, we can definitely come in and help coalitions, community groups with that. The next is capacity, and this is a big one. I hear this all the time, coalitions, you know, we just, we need to get more people to the table. We need more people involved. You know, I'm tired of doing everything myself. Uh, so we can come in and help coalitions, you know, on how to build capacity. We can do trainings on mobilizing or building capacity within a geographic area to address needs. You know, what is, what is your area of um, that your community is focusing on it, and we can pull, figure out how to pull people out of that area, um, you know, to help help you with your needs. And this can be done through membership, increasing general membership within that organization, or organizational structure. You know, how should we structure it? Should we, you know, from vice president to president, secretary, um, you know, we can work with coalitions and give them some options and ideas there. Um, leadership, um, you know, what is a leader responsible for within a coalition. Um, and then cultural competence and what that is, just making sure you have all the populations represented uh, within your group or your coalition and that you're not leaving some, some populations out um, within that organization. And then why a certain type of capacity is important, what building it means for your coalition, uh, what your coalition needs to do to build and maintain, maintain capacity in your area. You know, sometimes we get those people to the table, but now how can we keep them there? So we can come in and work with with you all on how to do that. And then what products you need to develop and facilitate progress in building capacity. Um, you know, it's just another specialty that, that we can help you out with. And the next one is planning. Um, so we can come in and, and you know, do trainings or work with coalitions on facilitate, or we can facilitate a meeting actually, where, uh, you know, we wouldn't be responsible for the meeting, but we can sort of make sure that the meeting stays on track, um, or we can come in and do a training, or we can, you know, just individually help leaders out, or, um, you know, maybe the board of the coalition out, um, and how to assist in developing a vision, a mission, statement, uh, objectives, outcome, and goals. Um, basically, how to build a, a plan. You know, this is what we want to do. This is these are the goals that we want to uh, accomplish, and this is how we're going to do it. And then, so everybody in the coalition, the community, the people that you recruit, you can show them that plan and say, you know, this this is what we're doing. This is how we're going to do it. This is what we expect to get done, and this is when we expect to get it done. Um, this is how we expect to fund it. You know, it answers a lot of questions, and we can come in and, and uh, you know help coalitions with that. And in that, you know, building evidence-based prevention strategies, programs, policies, and practices. You know, some things have been shown to work, and some things have been shown not to work from a scientific standpoint. And we've been trained on that. You know, the, the different things that ha that do work and the different things that don't work. So um, we can come in and help coalitions definitely with planning. And then once you have the plan, you know, we have to implement that plan. And we, we provide trainings on implementing implementing the evidence-based prevention strategies, programs, policies, and practices. And we can do that through document uh, documenting program components that work well. Uh, we can do that through helping coalitions identify where improvements need to be made, um, provide feedback so strategies are implemented more effectively. We can make, uh, you know, timely adjustments and activities and strategies. If something's working, not working, we can help coalitions recognize those so we can make those timely adjustments. And then to assess whether enough resources have been leveraged and where you might find more, uh, we can help communities see, do a resource assessment, um, you know, within their community uh, to see maybe somebody's already doing that community and you don't want to spend the coalition resources doing something somebody else is doing. Um, and then just engaging stakeholders and, and other sectors. And then evaluation, uh, the last element of the strategic prevention framework, we can provide trainings to coalitions and groups to measure the impact and the implementation of strategies, programs, policies, and practices. Uh, just sort of like what I said there with the implementation, um, you know, is it working? So we can do this process, help coalitions with a process evaluation 
where you know the process of what you're doing is that working do we need to change that process within that community um, if it's not working you know we can go back to the the assessment or planning stage um, but and then also monitoring community change you know we want to reduce youth alcohol use by 10 percent in our community um, you know we can set up an evaluation plan or help coalition set up an evaluation plan to see if they are um, changing the outcomes that they're they're targeting and then the outcome evaluation um, we can help with that um, you, maybe our numbers aren't where we want them to be so we need to change uh, exactly what it is that we're doing to to affect those outcomes um, and then just professional support we um, have access to professionals that are trained that have college degrees PhDs um, you know on how to set up surveys or how to do evaluation or what we should be asking what we shouldn't be asking um, so we have access to that so you know coalitions communities within our service area using us as a resource for our resources uh, is kind of way you can look at that so and, and trust me th those professional resources can be quite um, expensive at times uh, so be, with you all being able to use those you know can save the coalition not only money but time um, and, and get a real professional evaluation done for whatever it is that you're looking at and then we can work with coalitions on how coalitions can use that evaluation data um, there's a lot of different ways that, that coalitions will want to use that evaluation data that's basically what you report on this is what we did this is how we did it um, you know look at the good things that we're doing and that leads to sustainability um, you know coalitions being able to survive being able to re recruit different stakeholders in the community they want to jump on board because of the great things that coalitions are doing and we can come in and provide different types of trainings and, and help with uh, how to build a sustainability plan uh, within your group organization or coalition and then also how to relate sustainability to uh, everything the coalition does whether that be long term um, or short term um, so we can definitely come in and help with that and that's a big thing that a lot of coalitions um, you know that they, they don't think about maybe long term you know where are we going to be in five years where are we going to be in 10 years where are we going to be in 20 years uh, you know they see a problem within their community and they want to address that problem they want to address it now which is great um, you know sometimes we just want to point out that you, we definitely want to be thinking about sustainability and how can we keep the coalition doing these great things um, you know over a long time frame and then funding uh, sustainability you know it, it costs money to do the things that coalitions community groups want to do and we can come in and do trainings on funding and I don't you know I think this is where we are definitely underutilized a lot uh, with, with the community groups and coalitions that uh, we work with in our service area you know how can we help find them different types of funding sources you know and we can do this you know it doesn't always have to be cash it can be through in-kind services um, you know getting you know uh, the big factory in, in your town or the um, you know the agency that employs the most people you know whatever it may be but get them on your side where where you can use some of their their resources uh, to, to help benefit the coalition um, donations you know how how do we collect donations where do we collect donations um, you know we have some ideas and different things that we can help coalitions with um, how to do fundraisers you know we can help set up fundraisers if you've never done fundraisers or if you've done them and never really had any success we can come in and train coalitions on maybe how to uh, be a little better at that and then grants um, you know the big grants there, there's a bunch of grants out there uh, we can help uh, coalitions on give them resources where to find different grants um, maybe do some trainings on you know how to fill different grants out um, and just work with them in general um, you know any questions that they may have in, in grants um, some of the grants that we can help coalitions directly with are these mini grants uh, regional development funds and technical assistance funds and these are available for Missouri Department of Mental Health Division of Behavioral Health registered coalitions. 
Um, and the only way that they can get registered is through us, the Prevention Resource um, Center uh, in our service area. And there's a few qualifications that uh, community groups have to meet to become a registered coalition. Um, and they have to make sure that they, they meet those uh, regulations each and every year. But once, once they do, and they're not that hard, and we can definitely help coalitions or, or help groups um, become registered coalitions with the Division of Behavioral Health. Um, but once they do that, then they're, avail they're able to apply um, through ACT Missouri um, for these mini grants, regional development funds, and technical assistance funds. Uh, the mini grants are probably up to $5,000 a year. Regional development funds are up to $1,000 a year. And technical assistance funds are up to $1,000 a year, too. Um, so that, that's another service that, that we can provide to coalitions, um, helping them to gain funding um, for their community. And then we provide help, um, you know, just to sort of summarize it all up. There might be things, you know, that I haven't covered here um, that, you know, that we have helped with in the past or that you're like, well, I don't know, he didn't talk about it in the webinar. Um, you know, give us a call. There's a lot of things that, that, that I didn't include in this webinar, you know, that we do help coalitions and community groups with. And if we can't get you to help um, ourselves, I, we're pretty good at, at finding the people that can get you to help. Um, so I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. Um, you know, if you ever do need help with anything, whatever it may be, um, even if you're not sure if that's a service that we offer, please contact us. And, and, and we will do our best uh, to, to provide you with the help that you need. Um, so our preferred family health care prevention specialist, uh, already talked about him just a little bit, but Corey Esslinger, uh, he's a Service Area 1 prevention specialist, and I have his email there. Edward Mears, Service Area 13 prevention specialist. Um, and then Mary Lou Bell, Service Area 14 Prevention Specialist. And Corey, the Service Area 1 Prevention Specialist, he uh, hit the counties that he works with are Atchison, Holt, Buchanan, Andrew, Nottoway, Worth, Gentry, DeKalb, and Clinton counties. Corey's been with us for several years now, and he, and he does a great job in working with those, those communities, and he, he knows that service area real well. Um, so if you haven't already talked to Corey or, or um, you know, live in one of those counties, those nine counties, uh, please contact him. Service Area 13 um, Prevention Specialist is Edward Mears. He oversees Harrison, Davies, Caldwell, Mercer, Grundy, Livingston, Lynn, Sullivan, and Putnam County. Um, Edward's also a, a great resource for those uh, nine counties in Service Area 13. Uh, he hasn't been with the prevention department uh, quite as long, but he has been in the uh, substance use field uh, for quite some time now, uh, and he'll be a great resource uh, for those nine counties as well. And then our service area 14 prevention specialist, Mary Lou Bell, uh, she has Schuyler, Adair, Macon, Scotland, Knox, Shelby, Clark, Lewis, and Marion counties. Um, she's been very active in, in those uh, nine counties. Uh, working with community coalitions. Um, she's from that area, um, so she, uh, like Corey, knows her service area real well, and, and it's just a great resource for that, that service area. So if you live in any one of those nine counties, uh, Mary Lou is definitely the person that you need to contact. Again, I have, uh, you know, their names, their service area here, um, and their email addresses. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to write those down, maybe do that here real quickly. But it, if you can't remember them uh, or their email addresses or, um, you know, whatever the case may be, you can always um, email our prevention department at moprevention at pfh.org. Again, that's moprevention at pfh.org. Uh, it's pretty easy to remember at moprevention at pfh.org. Um, that email will come to the whole prevention department. Each one of the specialists will actually get it. Um, and if you'll just state, you know, what it is that you need, um, you know, maybe what county or what town you're from, then the, the prevention specialist that works in that area will definitely get back to you um, rather quickly. And if, they, if they're not available, uh, one of the other prevention specialists will get with you and we'll try to work with you as quick as we can and try to get 
um, whatever services you're needing to you, or if you have a problem or something, you know, try to get that resolved um, as quick as you can with you. So, but I, I appreciate everybody uh, watching the uh, the webinar today, and uh, hopefully, um, if you have any questions, you'll give us an email. Um, but other than that, well, I thank you all for attending.